This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. So we always endeavor to give you a better understanding of the kingdom. You know, God has called me to preach and teach and demonstrate the kingdom along with my wife. Amen. We are apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ with a message, amen, from the Lord himself of the kingdom. And so we purpose to give you insight, understanding of the kingdom of God so that you can respond correctly as you're supposed to be a participant in the kingdom of God. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And so when the manifestation, amen, of the power and the splendor of God produces the blessed, righteous state, just like it is in heaven. Heaven is blessed. It is, it is righteous. It is pristine. It is clean. It is pure. It is holy. It is righteous. Amen. So when that state is produced, divine order, as it were, because when you're dealing with the earth realm, you got to bring things back into divine order. Heaven is perfect, but in the earth, we have to bring things back, amen, into the divine order, the blessed state of heaven. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the kingdom of God coming or manifesting or coming upon us, amen. So the kingdom of God it produces salvation. It produces deliverance. It produces peace. Amen. It produces reconciliation. Amen. So it, it, it produces that blessed state because in the earth, the curse was at work, but Bible says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. As it is written, curses everyone that hangs upon the tree. Galatians 3.13, that Christ remove the curse. The devil's works for this cause was Jesus manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So when you talk about the kingdom of God coming, you're talking about destroying the works of the devil and bringing things back into peace and reconciliation with God, amen. You, destroying that spirit of rebellion that the devil introduced to Adam and Eve where they rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, amen. And so that is so important to understand it is the word of God is the commandment of God. The word of God must become a commandment to the bond servant. Amen. The bond servant is the one that loves his master and stays with his master because of love. Amen. And so the master is benevolent. God is benevolent. Amen. He is not harsh and cruel, amen, to his, to his people, amen. He reveals himself through love, amen. We respond, we respond to the love of God, amen. So the kingdom of God produces salvation and deliverance and freedom and peace, but the kingdom of God is not useful to you 
unless you change your mind and change your heart, the kingdom of God is not useful or is not being useful to you unless you change, change your mind, your thinking, and change your heart to that which is converted to the kingdom. What does that mean? That means you see by the light of heaven. Amen. That means that your heart is joined unto God, but also to help you understand the kingdom, it is joined unto heaven. The Bible says that we are all gathered at Mount Zion. Amen. That instead of Mount Sinai, amen, where there was remembrance of sin, that we are joined at Zion, both all of those in heaven and those in earth, that we are surrounded about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. That, that means commonality. Amen. Between heaven and the saints of God in earth. Amen. A common heart, a common theme. Amen. A common um, vision, amen, of the desires of God. Yes, they crossed over, amen. But the Bible says that they are for us also, that we would be faithful to God to join them, amen. We do join them on Mount Zion, the Bible says, in praise and in worship, we are joined unto heaven. Amen. We join the angels in singing. Amen. Because our hearts are one, are one with the Lord. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 2, it's where I want to start today. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. King James says, lest we slip away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his, his own will. How can we escape? The Bible says, verse 3 if we neglect so great a salvation. So the inference is that we cannot escape if we neglect so great a salvation. Amen. So the word spoken by angels proves steadfast that in, in any type of disobedience would receive a comparable reward or recompense not, not good, but, but bad. Amen. We must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. That is, the connotation is that what God has said, that even what God has said through the angels could not be ignored, but must be obeyed. How can we neglect. So great a salvation, not just salvation, but the Bible calls so great a salvation, which first began to be spoken by the Lord himself, amen, and then by us, and that we are saying that the writer of Hebrews is, is more than likely the apostle Paul, that this is an apostle speaking, 
Amen. And so the angel spoke, amen, the word of God, which could not be ignored. The Lord himself spoke, of course, the word of God, which could not be ignored. And the apostles spoke the word of God, which could not be ignored. But all of it, all of the word of God produced so great a salvation. Amen. So we're not allowed to reject salvation. And that type of salvation is called so great a salvation. Amen. Earnestly heed. So I'm just going to go through a few of these, these words. It says we must give a more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. He means to sincerely consider in order to obey. So if you heed, you obey. If you heed my warning, you take my warning. If you heed my word, then you receive my word. And so that we must, the Bible says, give a more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Again, God speaking. The, the ability to hear God is in accordance to the ability to obey what you have heard. The Bible says, my sheep, they know my voice. Amen. If you are sheep, sheep is an, is an attitude. You're led by the Lord. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. The sheep is called the, the mildest and meekest of animals, amen. They depend upon the shepherd completely, <laughs> man. That's the relationship between God's people and Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, the Bible says. And so it is, it is an attitude of yieldedness unto the Lord. You yeah. know, people are trying to hear God in some big thing when they have not obeyed God in some smaller thing. You obey the smaller, you hear more. Because all of God is about obedience, amen. And so you say, I am a friend of God. You brag on your relationship with the Lord, but everything that God says is not a suggestion but it is a command, amen. So God who loves you, the good shepherd loves you, amen. He speaks into your life, amen. And you have to obey that command. Remember that God spoke to Adam, every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. But Because if you do, and the day that you eat thereof, you will die. That's a command. Though God is loving Adam and God is speaking to Adam, you cannot, you cannot neglect, amen, so great a salvation which comes from the word that God lovingly speaks to you. So your relationship with the Lord is one where God speaks and where you obey what God speaks, so you are hearing his voice, you're ready for the next command, and the next command, and the next command, not out of um, harshness, amen, but out of love, you discover how much that the Lord loves you. And so you must earnestly heed the thing which was spoken, and if the word spoken by angels proved steadfast, amen, in Exodus chapter 23. The book of Exodus chapter 23. Verses 20 through 22. Exodus 23, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I send an angel 
before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. The Bible says that the angels are a flame of fire, that they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto the heirs of salvation. What God has prepared, amen. Your inheritance of salvation is what God has prepared. Your inheritance, amen. God is not only saving you once, amen, but he is giving you life, which is a life of salvation, amen. If you only knew, amen. The Bible says that he gives his angels charge over you to bear you up in their arms, lest you dash your foot against a stone, that the Lord um, surrounds you, the Bible says, with angels, amen, and that they listen, they hearken unto the voice of the Lord, amen. So God's word in your heart and spoken out of your mouth, amen, by faith, the angels will hearken to that as the voice of God. If you only knew how many times you've been saved. This is a, a great salvation if you, will, if you will receive, amen, the greatness, the greatness of this salvation, not just to be born again, but God, he carries you. The Bible says, I bore you up on eagle's wings, amen. If you only knew. Amen. And you would open yourself up to receive the greatness of this salvation. Amen. And so we see that the, the angel of the Lord, God says, don't provoke him. Amen. Because, because my name is in him. Amen. And then in Luke chapter 1, The book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, that's Zacharias, the priest, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayers heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear your son and you shall call his name John and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready the people, a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. An angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and to bring these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And so that the angel Gabriel caused Zacharias to be mute, not able to speak because of his fear and his doubt and unbelief. You, this, this thing about John the Baptist coming was a God deal and God could not have that person even who was supposed to be a participator, 
amen, a participant, amen, for this thing to happen, God could not have him speaking the wrong thing. So if the word spoken by angels proved to be steadfast in every transgression and disobedience, receive a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which was first spoken by the Lord and confirmed unto us, the apostles, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own, his own will. Amen. And so God backed up the apostles, with signs and wonders and miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. So God was saying that word, amen, which they were speaking was his word. And so heaven would back it up, amen. So one way to help describe unto you the workings of the kingdom of God is for the authority of God and heaven to back up the word to produce the kingdom of God. Amen. So the kingdom of God is produced when there is salvation. The kingdom of God is produced when there is deliverance. Amen. And so God will back it up that first with the apostles. Amen. And in this message, just slightly, gently, I will let you know that the things of God pertaining to the kingdom of God work according to the order of the Lord. Amen. And so God spoke to the apostles the same thing that the Lord Jesus spoke. The Bible says that when Jesus began to teach and preach, he says he taught and preach the kingdom. He said, now is the kingdom of God come unto you. So he would teach and preach, and then he would demonstrate what he would teach and preach by healing the sick, amen, cleansing the leper, opening blind eyes and deaf ears, mute tongues, amen, the healing the lame, amen. So he would preach and teach, amen. And then he told his disciples, to preach the kingdom, amen. Freely you have received, freely give. And so do the same thing, heal the sick, raise the dead, amen, cleanse the leper. The same thing that Jesus did, that they would do to demonstrate that the kingdom has come. So the kingdom has come is the gospel, it is, it is good news. But everyone does not receive the same. So, to the people who receive greatly, amen, it is a great salvation. But the people who do not receive or receive just a little bit, it is not a great salvation. So the terminology, so great a salvation is in accordance to receiving and receiving is in accordance to what entrance the word has unto you. Now, the Bible says, know no one according to the flesh. And so if the Lord sends a messenger, that you should receive the word of the Lord from that messenger. Amen. But unfortunately, that's not how many people operate. It is regard for people. People either regard or not regard people, amen. And so how they receive people many times is how they receive the word, amen. The Bible says when the message of the kingdom is preached, amen, and that it is not received or it is not kept, then Satan comes and snatches that word that was received, amen. The devil can have access 
to people's minds, if they don't know how to cast down every thought, every reasoning, and every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God, then the devil can speak to you. You could meet a person and the devil could be speaking to you the whole time in your mind as you, as you meet that person. I don't like that person. I don't, I don't like how they're dressed. I don't like how they speak. I don't like that they seem to be so different from me. Amen. And so your ability to receive what that person says is already being messed with. <laughs> you won't receive their word because you won't receive them as a vessel or a messenger of the Lord. I use that as an example. Amen. So the spoken word produces so great a salvation, but it is according to receiving, and receiving is according to entrance. Amen. How you allow the entrance of that word. People are guarded, amen, through religion and, and denominations, amen that many people are guarded against anything that is different from their religion or their denomination, though it may be, it may be the truth. The word is designed to enter. <laughs> the word is designed, amen, to be received. In Luke chapter 4, Verses 17 through 19. Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 19. And he, Jesus, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised to proclaim the acceptable, the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue was fixed on him, verse 21, and he began to say to them today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, amen. So Jesus says that that scripture in Isaiah chapter 61, he read that and says, this is pertaining unto me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, amen. And so the spirit of God and the anointing of God produces the freedom of, which the word of God proclaims, amen. You're not called to be in bondage. You're not called to be in captive, amen. And so the word of the, the Lord speaks that you are free or causes you to be free or the anointing destroys the, uh, removes the burden and to destroy the yoke, amen. And so Jesus said that this gospel, amen, he is representing the one sent by God to proclaim the truth, amen, of the gospel of the kingdom. And so it's not just the word, amen, it is the anointing upon the messenger and upon the word, amen. Sometimes, you know, God's people try to get things from the word and they don't know why it's not working, amen. This aspect of receiving 
from the messengers of the Lord, those sent by the Lord that have the authority of heaven, Jesus. They were astonished at Jesus' doctrine or teaching, for he spoke as one having authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus had the authority of God and the authority of heaven. So heaven is the blessed state. We're trying to get heaven in this earth. So heaven represents the kingdom of heaven. And so when it is manifested in this earth, or the truth of the kingdom of heaven is manifested in this earth, the works of the devil are destroyed, amen, and the kingdom comes, God's kingdom comes to this earth. So the people of God in heaven enjoy the presence of God. And so the, the people of God in this earth is, are supposed to enjoy the presence of God. The people or the citizens of God in heaven can hear the voice of God. They can see the throne of God. They can appreciate the, the, the splendor, the glory, and the majesty of God. Amen. And so to the degree, amen, of salvation being a great salvation, we can enjoy those very things here in this earth as a citizen of heaven, amen, and a participant in the kingdom of God to allow the kingdom to come in a mighty way. I was thinking about the scripture in Daniel. Amen. That talked about that image. Amen. Head of gold, the breast, the, the chest, arms, silver. Amen. And then um, bronze. Amen. And then iron. And then iron and clay. And there, there was a stone not cut out by hand that hit that image, amen. You would think it would hit the image upon the head of gold, but it, it hit the image on the mingling of the iron and the clay feet, amen. Talking about the kingdoms that Jesus destroys that people esteem, a kingdom of gold, a kingdom of silver, a kingdom of bronze, a kingdom of of iron, a kingdom of clay representing man, amen. A kingdom of iron representing strength, amen. It is military might. It is the industrial military complex, military might, plus this, um, this, this, this thing of, um, of this digital age and digital knowledge and, and computers and AI, amen, there has been an attempt to fuse man and a machine where man would be the perfect slave, amen, that the chip in the brain, amen, would cause a, a perfect slave, amen, the production of a perfect slave, and that, that military might the military being prepared to use, be used by Antichrist and not for the virtue of God, not for the justice of, of the Lord. Amen. So Jesus is represents the kingdom of God coming, amen, by destroying every, every other kingdom. So Jesus not only destroys sickness and disease and, and ailment, and, and demon possession and, and demon oppression, but the mindsets of, of man is steaming gold, silver, bronze, iron, amen, and clay, amen. So Jesus destroys every, every kingdom as his kingdom comes or his kingdom advances, amen. First Thessalonians. Chapter 1. I'm going to try to speed it up because there's some things I want to get to. First Thessalonians, chapter 1, 
verses 8 and 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. For from the word of the Lord, for from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So the, the, the effect of the entrance of Paul and his companions, amen, to the church there in Macedonia and Achaia is clear and everything. In other words, you can tell what type of entrance by how they responded to the word. What type of entrance we had unto you. What did they do? They preached the word. So the entrance, you, you had to receive the apostle Paul, amen, as you received the word that he preached. And I can tell you, Paul said, I can tell what manner of entrance we had by how y'all conduct yourselves in the word and your behavior out of the word. So no one even have to say anything. Amen. In one instance, God says, Paul says that you are his epistles written on the heart. Amen. So Paul, somebody would think, you know, that the apostle would be readily received. But that is not necessarily the case. It, it, when the apostle is, when the apostle is received, it is such a precious thing. Amen. In some cases, such a rare thing. Amen. I'm talking about true apostles, and I may get into that in, in, in a little bit. Amen. So, see, behold what manner of entry. Behold what manner of entry we had unto you. Amen. So that the effect of the entrance, amen, is oh, there we go is clearly seen. Amen. I won't turn there, but Galatians 4.14, Paul says that you received, he's talking to the Galatian, the church in Galatia, that you received me as the angel of God. Amen. You received me as the angel of God. So the apostle, I know somebody who will, get upset. The, the apostle is the word. I know Jesus is the word. The How do you know a true apostle? They represent the word of Jesus, that foundation, which cannot be deviated from. We don't debate about the word. We don't espouse opinions about the word. We are one <laughs> with with the word, if you if you can receive that. In, in Revelation, it says that you tried them that said that they were apostles and were not. It's, it's easy to tell. There's a lot of folks saying that they are apostles, but they're not one with the word. <laughs> Man. They are not one with the heart of the Lord. They are actually put out there. The reason that they're these days, and it used to not be the case that there are so many saying that they are apostles, is to call confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Amen. But if you have a lot of people saying that they are apostles and you receive them, but you reject the true apostle. Amen. The, <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. The true apostle must be seen. Somebody says, well, why, why don't you just do like the other ministers 
and be seen. Because those spaces, amen, are those platforms, amen, for preaching and all that and demonstration are filled up with the faults who don't want to give up that power. <laughs> amen. The true apostle is not trying to be someone. <laughs> amen. He knows who he is. And the case with my wife, who is one with me, she is. We know who we are, amen, but the entrance, amen, there must be an entrance. And so if the apostle is rejected, unless somebody steals their word, the word that they are speaking is rejected. And so most people, they center around lust, <laughs> and pleasing themselves. And so there's no appearing of the apostle, though the true apostle exists. So the history of the apostle is that when Christ ascended on high, he gave gifts, apostles, and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, amen. But the price that must be paid to be an apostle, now you see prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers appearing. Amen. And if there was a cost for the prophet, you would not see that type of prophet appearing much. <laughs> because the prophet who would not pay the price would fill up the place, the platforms. Amen. Jesus says to the scribes and Pharisees that your gatekeepers, he says, you possess the keys to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. You don't go in yourself, nor do you allow. So the word is allow. Whatever you allow is allowed. Amen. And so people don't have the depth of heart, the sensitivity of heart to see that apostles are being stoned. <laughs> Yeah, the apostle was being stoned, amen, martyred, amen. Somebody says you're not supposed to be struggling, amen, but everyone was invested so that the true apostle would not appear. So the history of the apostle, Jesus gave apostles, and that mantle, because Jesus gave apostles, that mantle was in this earth. And the Lord will choose other apostles. They either refused the mantle or if they did, that there were those who were invested that the two apostles would be hidden. Amen. The, the Bible says this. It says that not like Cain, who was a, the wicked one who slew his brother Abel. And why did he slay his brother Abel? Because Abel's gifts were good. <laughs> and Cain's were not. In other words, Abel's gift showed that Cain's gift wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Somebody says, you, you, you need to do like those other apostles. No, I don't. <laughs> no, no, I don't. So the greatness of the salvation is in accordance to the greatness of the receiving, which means the entrance. <laughs> Amen. So God is able to do all things, but people are not able to receive all things. Everybody's heart is not the same. You know, there's this false doctrine, amen, that we all are the same. But the heart is the true you. And so everybody's heart is not the same. Everybody is not receiving 
salvation is a great salvation. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 130, it says, the entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Amen. And then in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 6 through 8. First Peter chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is speaking of Jesus. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. So the Bible says to those who believe and receive that Jesus, the word, is precious. So think of every word that's in this Bible. Could the Lord bring any of the words in this Bible to you and you would count it as precious? Amen. And not stumble, not stumble at the word. Man thinks that they are as smart as God. You, you rationalize in your mind that you know what you're talking about. In the words that you don't want to receive, you simply reject and rationalize it away. Amen. And what I was trying to say about the apostles, that they would never rationalize away. The word, amen. They are willing to suffer the persecution, even death, to hold fast that the word of God is true. That's how you know, amen, a true apostle, amen. So if Jesus is the word, then the receiving of the word is the receiving of Jesus and vice versa. The rejecting of the word is the rejecting of Jesus. So let the word have entrance to produce a great salvation that means the kingdom of God coming coming unto you amen in Luke chapter 7 Luke chapter 7 verses 36 through 50 then one of the Pharisees asked him, Jesus, to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, <laughs> look at Jesus. He turns to the woman, <laughs> but he's speaking to Simon. Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. 
Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. To whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. And so I read that whole um, passage and of the Jesus at Simon um, the Pharisee's house and that this contrast between Simon the Pharisee and this woman who was a sinner who washed Jesus' feet, amen, with her tears and, and, and anointed his, his feet with fragrant, with fragrant oil and and washed it with the, with her hair. Amen. The woman who was a sinner loved Jesus much. So Jesus says, the person that knows that they are forgiven much loves much. Amen. And so that people believe that they're not a great, they were not a great sinner. Amen. They don't know that we were all conceived in sin. Amen. And great was that sin. So the salvation that Jesus provided was a great salvation so that we would be full of thanksgiving and loving him much. Amen. This woman had that revelation, but this Pharisee did not have that, that revelation. Amen. So salvation. Amen. I'm sure the Pharisee that he did not know that he had a need to be saved. But this woman knew that she had a need to be saved. Amen. Acts chapter 19. The book of Acts chapter 19. Verses 11 and 12. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons which were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. So God did unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Remember the beginning passage of scripture, I said that you must earnestly heed the things that you heard and how it says the word spoken by angels was steadfast and that the word was spoken by the Lord. And then the apostle, amen, the apostles that God would confirm with the apostles signs and wonders, and miracles and various gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God would confirm through the apostles. So God did unusual miracles. Amen. And so this is what I'm saying, that God can do anything. God is poised and ready that anyone, amen, that needs a touch from God, I don't care how mixed up, twisted up, mangled up, they are, the Lord can deliver so great a salvation. But in many churches, amen, this would not even be allowed. Amen. In many churches, because they have rejected the word and they have rejected the apostle. That's the theme I'm, I'm trying to thread through this message. That God does not work out of order. Amen. That even if people want to see signs, wonders, and miracles, the oil flows from the head. There, there must be a receiving somehow from the apostle. Amen. Maybe you'll be like Nicodemus. Amen. That came to see Jesus by night. Amen. Maybe you will come to see the apostle by night. Amen. They that trust in the Lord will be by no means be put to shame. You won't be ashamed. <laughs> Amen. 
If you covet the world, you'll be ashamed by the extreme nature of God because the great salvation is extreme. It will be seen as extreme. Amen. Laying hands on this, sick, casting out devils. I'm not saying a lay person cannot do it. I'm saying the effectual working of his power to usward who believe, the effectual, the effectual working of the power, the oil flows down from the head. Amen. Praise be to God. And so, in many churches, there are no regular altar calls to deliver or the laying on of hands. Amen. So in many churches, there are no, there's no regular altar calls for um, healing or deliverance. Amen. That, that does not exist. So aye, 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 there's no entrance. <laughs> Amen. There's no entrance for so great a salvation. <laughs> Man, there's a rejection. There is a rejection of the true apostle. That this is one of the main things God will be, will be dealing with the church in the last days. Amen. The appearing of the apostle. That you must allow the appearing. That, that Paul had to find people that he could work with. Amen. For him to do much other things that he did, many other things. I'm going to go through these very quickly because my, my time is spent. Matthew 12, 28, Jesus says, If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then is the kingdom of God come unto you. In Luke eleven twenty, 20, amen, he says, If I cast out devils by the finger of God, then is the kingdom of God come unto you. And in Exodus, after God was doing miracle after miracle after miracle, that the counselors of Pharaoh said that this is none other than the finger of God. In other words, the judgment of God. You can't fight against it. We cannot produce these miracles that God is producing. Amen. So God confirms. <laughs> Amen. That word Amen. Through signs and wonders and miracles, healings, and various gifts of the Holy Spirit. So these extreme manifestations that of God shows that God's kingdom has come. And many do not accept such ex extreme measures. Amen. Many do not allow it. In the modern, in the modern church, Amen. And so God has been dealing with me about that word "allow," and I don't know if, if, if I'll speak concerning that in future messages. It's what people allow. God gave the earth to man. It is what people allow, and platforms, Amen. Many times are filled by gatekeepers, Amen. And they, instead of allowing, hallelujah, the fullness of the Lord, the exceeding greatness, amen, of God, that that is rejected. That would, they say, it, it doesn't, it's not appropriate, doesn't look appropriate, amen, for those, amen, who, who have manners, for those who want to appear a certain way. Amen. The power of God can come upon the apostle in unusual ways. Amen. We are not necessarily all the same because the price that the apostle pays allows the Lord to pour out of the apostle without measure, without limits, amen, if he has given up everything, amen. So there is an extreme working of God, which is different from what 
many have seen, that most have never seen the extreme working of God. Neither would they want to allow it. Amen. How can we neglect so great of salvation? So the admonition of the Lord is that you cannot reject so great of salvation. And yet it has been rejected. Amen. The Lord can take a hold of me or my wife and, and shake us. What did you come to see? Read shaken in the wilderness. <laughs> Amen. The, the, the Lord could bring up words from heaven, which you never heard before. <laughs> the Lord could bring about shouts or noise or sounds that are definitely from the Lord, but those who wrap themselves in the spirit of the world, in the world, it would be uncomfortable to them and they would be ashamed. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Woo. So there's much that God wants to do, but you are ashamed. You will not allow and you will not accept. Amen. And so there's, you see what I'm saying? There's much that can be preached and much that can be said. Amen. But God deals with the heart. Whoever receives this message, I pray that you do receive and that you allow entrance, amen, of the apostles and that word into your heart. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.